newsman here. You definitely watch news and read it <laughs> right here. So anyway, uh, wow. I never thought I'd see a day when people would rise up against the police. Y'all hearing me or not? Guys, we need, we have to have in this country law and order. You know why? Because we're screwed up people's what we are. Okay? If I didn't have law and order, what would keep me from going to Walmart to buy a mower and not get, get Fred's next door? But that's illegal, so I can't go steal Fred's mower, so i got to go to Walmart and get one. Amen? Say. Y'all understand where I'm coming from? If there wasn't law and order, why would I? I was thinking about it yesterday. If there wasn't law and order, why wouldn't I just go over there at that lady's house and drive her Honda? Why do I need, you know, I just, instead of going to the Honda dealership, I'll just take hers. How about that? Law and order. We need it, yes or no? Aren't you glad as a business person you have law and order? Somebody comes into your business and they sit down and eat a meal or whatever, and they're expected to what? Pay for it, yes or no? You go to a store, you buy, you're walking through a store, you don't just shoplift and take people's stuff. Aren't you glad you live in a country where there's law and order? Yes or no? We don't think about it. Law and order. People can't just do whatever they want to do. We're crazy, guys. I mean, I'm saying Gary's crazy, okay? Listen, if there wasn't law and order, I'd be the first one to break it. I'm going to tell you that right now. Y'all hear me, yes or no? Don't think I'm this great guy. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner, Okay? So I can't steal, but I can do this. I can go to a consignment shop, and shoes that are $120, I can give $12 for them. Amen? Come on. That's close to stealing, ain't it? And jeans that are like 50 bucks, I got these for $4. I hope they don't split like that other pair I got not long ago. And a shirt's like $4. You see what I'm saying? If Gary could steal it, I would. I'm still trying. Y'all hear me, yes or no? Amen? Law and order. Let's talk about it today. Y'all ready or not? I'm not here to throw stones. I don't care who it is. You don't go out and block an interstate. Did you hear me? Yes or no? You don't stand in the middle of an interstate and block traffic. Y'all hearing me? Yes or no? I don't care what you think. It's wrong. Y'all hear me? Wrong. Like, and, and people trying to go to the hospital. They can't go to the hospital because traffic's all backed up. That's pathetic, guys. We believe in protesting in this country and peaceful protests, but not blocking lanes of traffic. Are y'all hearing me? Yes or no? I'm just talking. I'm back, okay? Here we go. Let's go with a message, though. Law and order. Let's go with a message up here on the screen. Let's just pop it up, Rod. You push me. In a 10-year study by the University of Houston researchers, they examined 15,000 documents from America's founders. And they determined of these 15,000 documents that 34% of their quotations came from the what? 34% over one-third of the quotations of these founding documents, not like three, 15,000 of them came from the Bible. Aren't you glad this nation was founded on the teachings of the Bible and not the Koran? Yes or no? Can we praise the Lord for that? Come on. You can't look at this nation and look at our documents and founding documents and say, well, look at that, like, like 35% were based on the Koran. Now, there's a lot of countries in the world that you could do that. I'm just glad I don't live there. Amen. Okay? Not trying to be ugly. It is what it is. I gave a message before I left on Islam versus Christianity. Just checking that off again. Amen. How about this? Aren't you glad that this nation was founded on the teachings of the Bible and not on the teachings of a man, of a king, or somebody like that, but the Word of God? Can we praise Him for that? Come on, man. That's where you live. We're talking about law and order. At least 50 of the 55 framers of the Constitution were Christians. I think they were probably all 55, but that's my opinion. But at least 50 of the 55. The Supreme Court in 1892, after an exhaustive 10 year, can you believe the Supreme Court is working 10 years on something? Wow. 10 year study, they ruled that the United States is what? A religious people, this is a Christian nation. That's what the Supreme Court said after 10 years of study. I didn't need that long, amen? Come on. Law and order is what we're talking about today. When this country was founded, now keep in this, keep in with me now, don't, 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 don't lose me. We're going down the same path. Hang in here. When this country was founded, the leaders of the various colonies and states, say it with me, were what? 
steeped in biblical what? Okay? I'm glad the Constitution's not getting written today. And our founding documents today. We'd be up the creek without a paddle. Amen? But thank God when this, the, this nation came about and the leaders that we had, they were steeped. It was just the way it was. That was their thinking. It was the Bible. Okay? This is what they knew. This is where they drew their what? Ideas for government. Don't, I'm not getting sideways here. We're on the path here to law and order. But this is how they thought. They thought biblically. All right? And that's how these documents were written. It was only natural for them to turn to the Bible for what? Guidance as to how to make what? Civil law. Who makes up law? How do you come up with law if you don't have some source? It can be at the whim of a king or a religion. Okay, what are you going to do? How are you going to make what's right and wrong? How are you going to come up with that? Is it wrong for a woman to speak and to have freedom? Yes or no? No, it's not wrong. Yes or no? Okay, absolutely. Okay? And you can just go down the list. But the point is, is that the, when we started this nation, they had biblical thinking. They were steeped in it. And that's how they came about with our laws. This was the standard for law. You can look at major documents, beginning with the Mayflower Compact, all the way through the constitutions of all the states. You see biblical law built into this country. Y'all with me so far? Hang in here with me. Noah Webster said this, and I've got a whole message on Noah Webster if you want to. He's the fellow that I have his handy-dandy dictionary in my right-hand drawer. People ask me how I preach. Generally like this, with a Bible and a Webster's Dictionary. Okay? Because I, I sometimes need help understanding words. Amen? But uh, Noah Webster, what did he say? The moral principles and precepts contained in the Scriptures ought to form the basis of all our civil what? Constitutions and what? And laws, all the miseries and evils which men suffer from vice, crime, ambition, injustice, oppression, slavery, and war proceed from their despising or neglecting the precepts contained in the what? Remember him when you pick up that dictionary next time, amen? What a good guy. Amen? He understood it. Listen, if we don't have law, we're screwed. This is what he's saying. It's horrible. We've got to have laws, man, for us crazy people. Y'all hear me? Okay, keep looking. Biblical absolutes formed into law meant what? Freedom without what? Let's say that together. Biblical absolutes, help me, formed into law meant what? Freedom without... Hey, listen. I don't like getting a ticket. You heard me a few weeks ago, didn't you? Say, I wasn't thrilled about it, okay? I'm free. I was able to speak to him, and I did, okay? But it's the law, and I, I'm subject to it just like everybody else, right? But if we don't obey the law, we're not going to have freedom. Y'all hear me, yes or no? If you don't obey the law and you don't have law, you have no freedom in this country. Okay? You ought to be free enough, if you've got a baby that's sick like recently was, to get that baby to that hospital without being interrupted on an interstate with people standing there saying, no, you can't get through here. Yes or no? Freedom. Freedom. Okay? Keep looking. Now, two big deals. Two big deals. The Declaration of Independence says there exist certain unalienable rights of men. These rights were given by who? God. Most nations before the United States of America had their rights controlled by whoever was in what? I'll give you rights if I feel like giving you rights because I am the king. Okay? But thank God we have certain unalienable rights given to us by who? By God. That's a big deal. Number two, because consensus from the Bible was absolute truth, Listen to this. This is, a great, this is a great right here. Because consensus back in the day was that the Bible was absolute truth, the tyranny of a few or the tyranny of a majority could be overcome by one person standing up and appealing to the Word of the living God. And he could, he could call that thing down. Amen? Say, further we get away from the Bible, the more trouble we're in. I'm telling you. 
Love the Word. You say you love the country, but I don't know about that Bible. You can't have both, brother. Come on. You love this country. If you love this country so much, what made this country great came right from this book. We're talking about law and order today. Can we thank God that we have the Bible in America? Come on, come on. Boom! Boom! That crazy people like me can get up on stage on a Sunday morning and talk about it. Amen? And we can worship today. Law and order. Let's switch the page now. Our system of government is based on the what? If you don't have the rule of law, you're not going to have government. You're not going to have a government for the people and of the people. That's for sure. If you don't have the rule of law. So we need the rule of law. That's what we're talking about. These laws that we have. Now, I know there's crazy laws. I'm not saying every law. I understand that. I'm not saying every... Yeah, I think crazy people make up crazy things sometimes. Can we agree on that? Yes or no? I get that. Okay, I get that. It happens, all right? But the laws of this land that we understand, basic laws that we understand of society and how to live, they directly descend from the Old Testament Hebrew law and from the Ten Commandments. Flat out, the Ten Commandments. Number one, a sword pointed to heaven, have no other gods before me. Number two is a swan. Gold, make no idols. Number three, two V's, don't take God's name in va 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 vain. You can get the video in a little bit. Number four, piece of cheese on a stick, whole Swiss, holy cheese, keep the Sabbath holy. Got it? Yes or no? Number five, puppy dog being rejected. Honor your father and mother. Number six, long monkey's tail. Don't kill the monkey. Thou shalt not kill. Got it? Yes or no? Number seven, upside down putter. Don't putter around. Don't commit adultery. Number eight, snowman, bad snowman, snowman with a mask. He steals. Thou shalt not what? Steal. Number nine, little girl, balloon on a stick. She lies on a balloon. Thou shalt not lie. Number ten, Michael Jordan's basketball. Rich, famous, don't covet his stuff. Boom, boom, boom. Thou shalt not what? Ten Commandments. Got them? How many know them? You've learned them with me over the years, okay? Okay, we got the video out back. Get it. It's fun. It's fun. I think I'm heavier in the video, but go ahead and get it. Make fun of me. Okay, whatever, whatever. Ten Commandments. Hebrew law. That's where we get our laws from. Do you understand that? Wonder where they got the idea that you can't go into Home Depot and just steal something. Bible. Yes or no? Where do you get the idea that, no, your neighbor's wife is, that's his wife. That ain't your wife. Okay? Okay? You have nothing to do with her, stay away from her. Got that? Yes or no? Yes or no? Does the Bible teach that? It absolutely says that. This is law, guys. Amen. Did you know there's still laws in the books of most states for those that commit adultery? It's just not enforced. Did you know that? Yes or no? Yeah! Yeah! Check it out. Check it out. Most of the states have laws in their books for people that commit adultery. Well, that, what's wrong with that? That shouldn't be against the law. Well, it is against the law. It's against God's law. And it made it into our laws. But we're so cool these days. Well, whatever. Y'all hear me or not? All right. These laws with the concept of unalienable rights. So here we have the laws of the Bible. Hebrew law, the Old Testament, uh, Ten Commandments. That's the big granddad of them all. You don't keep the Ten Commandments to get to heaven because you can't, okay? You keep the Ten Commandments so you abide by the Ten Commandments because that's the rule of law. And God's a God of, of law. And He's a God of order. And this is what He demands out of us. And He's a holy God. These laws with the concept, take these laws now with the concept of unalienable rights given by God, and it helped ensure a way of life that respects the dignity and value of every individual citizen. That's the beauty of, of law. It's because we're to respect that business owner. We can't just go in and take his stuff, yes or no. We're to respect our neighbor. We just can't go in and steal their stuff this afternoon. Yes or no? You can't just go pop somebody upside the face. Boom! I just thought I'd hit you. But you know that's been happening over the last few years. You see it on TV. People are just standing there. Somebody walks up and cold cocks them, and they get it on video, and they think it's funny. Hello? Law and order. Y'all hearing me? It's a big issue. This powerful combination of these absolute laws from the Scripture 
and the inalienable rights that we've been given by God is the foundation of what? It's the foundation of our government. It was? Well, it still is. We're going to keep it in there. Amen? Come on. We're going to stand up for this country. Stand up for what's right. Amen? Come on. I tell you, I'm going to be famous one day. A shift away from absolute laws and unalienable rights given by God tears at the fabric of our nation and if not abated will ultimately lead to our demise. Who said that? I did. Okay? Okay. So if we shift from that, from absolute rights and law, it's going to keep ripping at the fabric of our country and it will ultimately lead to our failure. Y'all hear me? Law, hey, I don't like getting a ticket. I happen to speed, okay? I do. I'm sorry. Okay? I catch myself. I don't know why. I've got issues. How many are like me? You catch yourself sometimes. Whoa! Whoa! I can't believe it! Whoa! You know what I mean? I'm just glad Richard Nixon's not president anymore. We got the speed limit at least above 55 again. Amen? Come on. Come on. <laughs> remember when it went to 55? Y'all remember that? Say, we ain't ever going to get there. I loved Colorado. Colorado speed limit, 75 miles an hour. And you can go 10 over, you think, right? How many think that? You can go about 8 or 10 over. How many? Five? Well, I had a, I had a uh, highway patrolman tell me 10 one time, and I've been doing it. So anyway, there we go. I'm terrible. So don't make, I'm not preaching this message today as a guy that does it all right. Okay? If I didn't have speed limit signs, do you think I would go really fast? Oh, yeah. You're finding out what kind of a creep I really am, aren't you? He would steal his neighbor's lawnmower. <laughs> oh, and I would definitely hit somebody in the face. There's no doubt about that. Not just for no reason, but if I had a reason, you're getting hit. I mean, it's going to happen. I'm glad I have laws, aren't you? I'd be arrested, it'd be in the paper, and you would print it. That's terrible. 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 What did John Adams say? If you don't want to listen to me, what did he say? President and one of our founding fathers. We have no government armed with power, capable of contending with human passions, unbridled by morality and religion. Avarice, ambition, revenge, gallantry would break the strongest cords of our Constitution as a whale goes through a net. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. I guess laws matter, don't they? If you want your freedom. Yeah, but we're being oppressed. There's laws and there's this. Well, you have freedom. Amen. Yes or no? Come on, keep looking. Law and order is what we're talking about. An important aspect of the American Constitution is that it has at its basis that man is basically what? That's the bottom line. Why do we have law and order? Because at its basis, the thinking of the founders and people writing our documents realized we are basically what kind of people? A what? But that's terrible today to say that. No, no, you're not a sinner. My whole next message is on law and order and on sin, the sin aspect. I'd love to have you stay. It's a different message. We have laws and order. We need law and order because we are what? Sinners. We need Jesus because we are what? You take sin away, you have no salvation. You don't need it, right? And you take sin away, you don't need any laws. You can just do whatever you want to do. You think laws are important? Say we're just foolish and sometimes thinking we can keep the law and get to heaven. <laughs> That's not what it's about. We keep the law and try to keep the law because we're crazy people. Got it? And we need help because we're sinners. Yes or no? Okay, keep looking. The founders built into the Constitution an elaborate system of what? Checks and balances. They knew we were sinful. That's why we have the kind of government we have. It's evident that there's an executive branch... There's a legis legislative branch, and there's a ju judicial branch of government. There's separation of powers. Why? wonder why they did that. Just because it would be cute? No, because you're going to have people in each one of those branches wanting to do their thing, and there needs to be somebody pushing back. Amen? 
And I know we get frustrated with Congress and them not getting things done, but I'd rather them not get something done if it's the wrong thing. Amen? Say, something stupid. Hello, say. Okay, keep looking. It's also evident that, there, that man is basically sinful when they set up the states. States' powers versus federal powers. I'm glad we have that kind of government. And the federal government does come in. It seems to push and take up more ground to the state than, than maybe it's, it's supposed to. But I'm glad there can be that pushback. Amen? Because there is some sinful stuff in our, in our hearts. And there's this, we want it our way and what have you. So I'm glad we have it like that. There's a need for law and order. Say it with me. Because we are basically what? Yes or no? Say how many of you didn't have to obey the law and there was laws out there? How many of you think you'd probably break it? Can I say that? Yeah. I, I knew there's a few of you. you I knew you were going to do it. I sort of was thinking you would do it too. How about this side? If there was no law in our Dina, we know you've done done it. <laughs> Dina already did it and it was illegal. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep looking. The United States of America was grounded in the idea of what? Self-government. What does that mean? Pop it up. Self-government doesn't simply mean voting for someone to represent you. I believe in self-government, so I'm going to go out and vote for somebody to represent me. Well, it means that, but to me, that's the least important thing self-government means. Okay? Self-government means for you and me to govern ourselves. You've got to make better decisions. Yes or no? Can't be an irresponsible fool. What's wrong with you? What you been smoking? Quit. Govern yourselves. We have a country based on self-government. Self-government. That's what John Adams was saying. If we don't govern ourselves, you think the Constitution's going to hold this nation together? If we don't govern ourselves, you're going to bust through that thing like a bat out of hell. Excuse me. Okay? Govern yourselves. That's why the founders based our government in Old Testament Hebrew law. And they based it on the Ten Commandments. They based it on something that was solid. Amen? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Amen? You honor your father and mother. Do parents have parental rights? Yes or, yes or no, over children? Absolutely. It's a good thing, isn't it? Say, I wouldn't want to send Danny and Abby on to Colorado by themselves. They'd kill each other. <laughs> Amen? Come on. That's why believing the Bible and morality was absolutely and undeniably what? Encouraged. That's why I feel like when we get together on church on Sunday morning, I'm doing one of the best things I can do for our country. Preaching the Word. Okay? And we're going to get to the Word. This is a... In God We Trust series message I'm doing right now, and I use a lot of this when I do this in the summertime around July 4th and right after I'll do this. But teaching the Word, it's the best thing we can do. best thing I can do for you is to, to have a message like this today. This is good for Inglewood, Florida. Yes or no? This message, this message helps you to appreciate those who are in authority over you. Okay? It's good. That's what the Bible says. If we don't govern ourselves and our families, there will be no what? We say that, don't we? It starts where? At home. And I don't want to get too sideways in my talk today, but I don't believe the police are targeting certain races. I don't believe that. Okay, I don't believe that. Are there bad people? Yeah, because we're sinners. You're going to find bad apples in every bunch. It's going to happen. But so often why police are in certain areas is because that's where crime is. <laughs> Amen. Yes or no? And when you trace it back, so much of that is broken families. If we don't have law and order in our homes and, and we don't teach our kids, and that's not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to be I grew up in a home that didn't have a whole lot of law and order. Okay? It's the way it was. Mama cheated on dad. Dad cheated on mama. Mama's drunk. Dad is drunk. You hear me? Yes or no? Didn't have no ride to the ballpark. Had to get there the best I could. Any way I got to go, you got to get there. Doing whatever. 
My mother remarried. I was 12 years old. My stepdad puts penthouse magazines and Hustler on, the, on my bureau for me to see, and I'm 12 years old, corrupting my mind. You hear me, yes or no? Is that the way a young man should be raised, yes or no? Absolutely not. Amen? Hello? Y'all okay? I didn't scare you, did I? You're like, oh, my gosh, we can never come here again. That's a dirty man. He's a thief. He's a robber. He hits people. Welcome to America. We need Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I don't need the phony mess either. I need the real deal, Jesus. I need his teaching. I need his scriptures. I don't need to be flopping like a chicken. Excuse me. I got enough problems. I need to know how to live, baby. Amen. I need to know how to love Kim and love the young ones and love you and be a good person and care for people. Yes or no? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching me and helping me. There will be no freedom without law and orders. There's, there's going to be what? And how many would say it? It just sort of has made your heart sink a little bit when you saw the shootings in Dallas. Can I see your hands? I mean, it just was like shocking. Were you shocked a little bit? Yes or no? Wow. And I know that's just one thing, but I hear the number in Chicago, murders in Chicago, you know, maybe 2,000 this year or 4,000 last several years. That's shocking to me. These are real people. These are people's moms and dads and sons and daughters. This is crazy. Is that crazy? It's nuts. In Orlando, somebody walks in over here and shoots almost 50 people. That's horrible. We need law and order, yes or no? Okay. The federal government isn't the most important thing, guys. The federal government's not the most important thing. Self-government is. Y'all hear me, yes or no? Federal government can sit up there and do whatever and they can meet. We're so far removed from federal government, it ain't even funny. We don't know these people. We don't see these people. We hear from them on TV sometimes. And we expect them. That's what gets me with campaigns. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. You know what's going to make a great America great is if I do something. Otherwise, it ain't probably going to get done. Y'all hear me? Self-government. Taking care of yourself. Watching yourself. Law and order. Governing yourself. Keep looking. What is the purpose of civil government? What is the purpose of civil government? I hope I'm not boring you to tears. It's like your civics class with Gary. Here we go. To be God's servant, to restrain evil. That's the purpose of civil government. To be God's servant, to restrain evil. Why are the police out there? Just smiling, eating donuts? Is that what they were called to do? Yes or no? Excuse me. No, they're there for a purpose. They're there to restrain evil. When they see evil that needs to be restrained, it's getting restrained. Okay? Number two, what's the purpose of civil government? To be God's servant, to reward good. Isn't it a good thing that you could sleep safely last night at your home? Can I see your hand? Say, and go to sleep with some peace. Isn't it a good thing that you drove here this morning and it's against the law for somebody to be driving in your lane? Head on, coming right at you. Aren't you glad there's laws? Yes or no? And that there's people that have restraint out there. Aren't you glad as a business owner or a, or a contractor, you go do a job? If the people don't pay you, you can have recourse to get your money because you did a hard job and, it, and you, you deserve that. Isn't that a good thing, yes or no? Hello, say. You see the importance? Law and order is there to restrain evil, but it's also there to reward good. We are rewarded good all the time because we have freedom in this country to live and to do and to come to church. This is some of the greatest freedom you'll ever experience right here, being free to worship Jesus Christ. Being, yeah, free to worship. Can we thank you for that? Come on, free to worship the Lord. Come on. Amen. So law and order, it's important. Keep looking. I'm going to read these scriptures with you and I'm going to be done. Romans 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. This is the Christian position. Okay? I'm going to just go ahead and say it. I haven't been a big fan of the president. Okay? I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm a free person. I get to be free, right? I get to have an opinion. 
but you haven't heard me get up on this stage and bash him and say things and like you hear on TV, and, and I'm just not going to do it. You know why? Because I believe the Bible. And the Bible trumps Gary's feelings. You understand? Say. Y'all with me or not? It's what the Bible teaches. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of who? God. That's what the Bible says. And they that resist shall receive to themselves what? I strongly encourage you, if you get pulled over, don't be belligerent and ugly. Submit. Yes or no? Okay? Be respectful. Okay? For rulers are not a terror to good works. This is what we just said. Why civil government? To restrain evil. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the what? Evil. Trust me, most officers get up every day and they don't want to go do no, have to deal with no evil. And back to the family. The number one place where a, a police officer is most likely to have a big problem is at somebody's house. Domestic abuse. Crazy. Our families going to hell in a handbasket creates more problems. Okay? That's law enforcement. Law and order. They're not a terror to good works. You're doing good. Hey, we're doing good here at Fellowship Church. Thirteen and a half years, 14 years per year, I guess. We've been having church. I haven't had anybody come in and try to shut us down. I've had most people in government applauding me. Amen? Say. We haven't had a cop come in here and, and try to shut us down, have we? Because we're doing good here in this town. Yes or no? That's what law's for. But not if you're evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is what? Good, and you're going to have praise of the same. Civil government's there to restrain evil and to reward what? Good. It's that simple. For he's the minister of God. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Do you look at that police officer like that? As the minister of God? Say. Well, if he's, if he's enforcing the law, which is the laws of God, I guess he is a minister of God, isn't he? Yes or no? And police officers ought to see themselves as ministers of God. And if there is any gray areas or problems with police, I think that would help it a lot. If they see themselves as ministers of God. Amen? But don't back off enforcing the law. That's the right thing to do. We want you to do that. Amen? Keep looking. For he's a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be what? How many have ever been afraid when you, got, you, got, you, were, you did something wrong and the cops came and you were scared? Can I see your hands? Come on, come on. There's at least a few. Come on. Yeah, I'm with you. So be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he's the minister of what? A revenger to execute wrath upon him that does what? Evil. It's not, it's not, they're not the bad guy when somebody does evil and they're enforcing the law. That's a good thing. That's a minister of God. That's right. Yes or no? Ain't easy, but it's right. It ain't easy being a parent and enforcing that at your house. It'll wear you out, but it's right. Amen. Wherefore, you, you, you must needs be subject. You must needs be subject. Not only for wrath, no, not just because, you know, they're out there if you do evil, but for conscience sake. Have a good conscience. You want to have somebody like that? Come on. This, we have to be subject to law and order. For this cause, pay your what? Tribute. Nobody likes doing that, do you? Paying your taxes and paying your fees. And they keep going up, don't they? But you still like being free, don't you? And you have recourse through government to try to make some changes. I understand that. But otherwise, pay it. Is that what the Bible says? For they're God's ministers. Man, go pay your taxes or something like that down at the courthouse or wherever you're going to go and tell them when you pay them, you're God's minister and watch them fall over. <laughs> Thank you for being God's minister. I'm giving you my tax money. They will fall right over. They will stroke out on you. <sighs> 
Come on. Render therefore to all their what? Dues. Tribute to whom what? Tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom what? Honor. This is what the Bible says. How many were just raised this way? This is crazy talk by the preachers. Well, you just raised this way. You know why you were raised that way? Because you were raised in America. Or you were raised in a place where somebody taught you the Bible. You didn't even know you are getting taught the Bible when you are getting taught the Bible because that's what the Bible says. Yes or no? Grandma didn't make this up. Amen? Keep looking. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that they may by your what? Good works which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every what? Ordinance of man for the whose sake? I don't like this. I don't want to do this. Too high. I'm doing it for Jesus. Law and order. Whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, or as to them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do what? Why do we have civil government? To restrain evil and to reward what? It's all through the Bible. Okay? For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorant of, ignorance of the what? Foolish men. As free, not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. We are free in Christ, but we are still bound to keep the law. Not to get to heaven, but to keep yourself brighter because you and I are crazy. Yes or no? I know you don't like that. He called me crazy. I can hear you over lunch. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God and honor the who? Well, we don't have a king. You're better off than you thought, aren't you? But if you had one, you need to honor him. Is that what the Bible says? Absolutely. As a Christian, how am I supposed to behave? We're done here almost, Raj. Owe no man anything but to love one another. Here's how you're supposed to behave. Law and order. For he that loves another has fulfilled the law. Look at this. How are you supposed to behave? Right here in the Bible. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Bang. It's right out of the gate number one, ain't it? Look at that. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment that I didn't cover, he says, it's briefly comprehended in this saying, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Say does the Bible teach law and order? That's the question this morning. Does it? Yes or no? Absolutely. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. You love, but I'm going to tell you right now, that's the greatest. Amen? And that knowing that the time, listen, it's high time, guys, to awake out of sleep. Our salvation is nearer than we believe. The night's far spent, the day's at hand. Let us therefore cast off those works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Amen? That's who we're supposed to be as Christian people. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not rioting, not being crazy drunk. Are you crazy? Not in chambering and wantonness. This is crazy sexual perversion, acting like a nut. Not in strife and envying. Sitting right, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And don't make provision of the flesh, because I'm going to tell you something, it'll get you. Amen? Y'all all right so far? We're almost done. You can say I made it. Back to Peter. If you want to know two passages, it'd be Romans 13, 1 Peter, chapter number 2. If you want to look at law and order, two good passages. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the what? Okay, if you work somewhere, you should be good. Amen, say. Yeah, but what if they're not really nice to me? Well, that doesn't let you off the hook being kind and sweet and a loving person. Yes or no? Well, they treat me bad, so I'm not going to show up to work on time. Well, get another job. But do the right thing. Amen, say. That's what the Bible says. For this is thankworthy if a man... For conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongly. 
What glory is it if when you're buffeted for your faults, you take it patiently? But if when you do well and you suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even here until we are called, because Christ also suffered for us and he left us a what? An example that we should do what? Follow in his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, he didn't revile again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but he committed himself unto him that judges righteously. And that's what you and I need to do. We need to buy the law, buy the law, do the right thing. If we don't understand, we're going to commit that to the Lord. Yes or no? Who his own self bear our sins in his own body. That's what Jesus did for us. That we being dead to sin, we should now live unto what? Righteousness. By whose stripes we're healed. For you were a sheep going astray, but now you're returning to the bishop and shepherd and bishop of your soul. Raj, where are we at, buddy? Am I close? Am I done? you got to help me here. How's a Christian supposed to behave? We're done right here. Would you say them loud with me? Law and order. How are we supposed to behave? Say it loud with me. Number one, be, 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 do, love, follow. Did you get it today? Law and order. The night's far spent, guys. How long is it going to take you to, to let's wake up? Come on, do the right thing. Honor those above us. The beautiful thing, the Bible says, live peaceably with all men. That's the, that's the purpose of Gary Clark. I can live peaceably with all men so that I can preach the gospel. If I'm out there causing all kinds of chaos and problems, I ain't going to be able to freely preach that, the gospel of Christ. Amen? And that's your goal too, guys. You're not a preacher maybe, but you are. You're, you're a missionary. You're a Christian. You're a witness for the Lord. Amen? Come on. The night's far spent. The day's at hand. Let's cast off those works of what? And don't convince yourself they're right. If they're dark, they're dark. Cast them off. And let's put on the armor of what? Light. Law and order. Let's thank the Lord for the word this morning. Amen. Come on. Boo. Law and order. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda West, Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.